Welcome back to Guilty Pleasures, the show that gets updated very irregularly. And since it takes me so long to get these videos out, I thought I'd treat y'all to a special one this time. That's right guys, we're not talking about one game today, we're not even talking about two. We're talking about three whole different games, baby. And what do you know, they're all games that I played on my PS2 as a kid. I recently went back and played all of these now to see how they hold up and they're pretty dated but they're so damn fun I just want to talk about them. Cause last time on this show, we got a little mean. But it falls flat in so many categories, leaving a lot of this game's moments to be mediocre at best. The only way I can think to describe it is like saying it feels like a beta for a zombie game that still has 10 years left in the oven. And that's not really the point of this show. Well, I mean, I don't really know what the point is, honestly. Admit one to the grand opening of Horrorland! WHERE NIGHTMARES COME TO LIFE! Hey, I recently made a video about Goosebumps, you should go watch it. Please, nobody watched it at all. Goosebumps Horrorland. Yep, that's it, that's the whole title. I played this game when I was really young, like six years old, and I remember this game being very creepy. I remember Horrorland being this massive, sprawling, labyrinthian nightmare. I remember the challenges being super difficult, and I remember really wanting this shirt for some reason. But in retrospect, all these years later, it's not nearly as scary as I once remembered. It's not really scary at all. The challenges in many games are kind of fun, but they get boring after a while. And this shirt, I still kind of want it, it's pretty sick. I want your blood. Nate, come on. <laughs> So the basic plot of this game is this kid randomly gets a ticket to Horrorland. Admit one to the grand opening of Horrorland! So either this ticket talks or this kid has a really loud reading voice. He tosses the ticket but that shit comes back like the letters from Harry Potter. And then this random kid shows up and convinces him to go, so he's like, eh, fuck it. World's greatest horror-themed amusement park! Can you believe it? It's a dream. You mean nightmare, right? Ooh, you suck! Ah, Horrorland. Set up in what looks like a desert? <laughs> Tickets, please. What are you supposed to be? Some kind of swamp monster? Once you get in the park, you spend a lot of time playing the various games, and they're actually a lot of fun at first. <laughs> this one's my favorite. Woohoo! But I meant what I said earlier about these things getting pretty tiresome after a while. Eventually, you'll find this random little girl trapped on a ride, and you have to spend the rest of the game trying to help her escape. You continue to do a shit ton of mini games, invest in Bitcoin only to lose it, and at one point, you even dress up like a Horrorland monster? I thought these weren't costumes and it's just what they are. Am I wearing someone's skin? Eventually you escape on this roller coaster by literally crashing out the side of the park. And then your friend just walks out the front entrance two seconds later like no problem. Are you okay, Gigi? I feel wretched. So that's Goosebumps Horrorland and I love it. As much as I rag on the mini games, I think the park itself is sick and super fun to explore. There's several unique areas, all with their different aesthetics, like the dark castle, the lake of blood, the weird futuristic looking area, and the fucking swamp that has so many damn creatures in it, I was half expecting Swamp Thing to pop out of the corner at any moment. <laughs> I'd even take Man Thing, I guess. And for what it's worth, some of the mini games were a lot of fun, so I guess I enjoyed this replay. Also, this game is so fucking easy, I don't know how I couldn't beat it as a child. I must have been really fucking stupid, but not anymore. Now I'm really smart. <laughs> Taking a step back from the spooky shit, I want to talk about something I loved as a child. It's not that. Nah dude, even little kid me thought this shit was annoying. To be fair though, it was competing for my love with fists. So good luck with that. Although I do kind of like this clip. Hunting the infection called crime. A sickness that sneaks in through the cracks. The way that Brussels sprouts sneak onto a plate of delicious macaroni and cheese. But what I loved as a kid was the video games. Don't get me wrong, I had a lot of the action figures too. Wolverine was my favorite because I'd like to shove him in my asshole. <laughs> but the games are where it's at, baby. I don't care what y'all say. Yeah, Xavier, your video was funny and well-spoken and a lot of your criticisms were valid. But I still like it. Some jokes on you, uh, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, this game is dated and really repetitive. Like, all you do is beat that ass for five hours straight. And it controls like shit. The camera is fucking broken. But still better than Avengers, though. I must have replayed the Mole Man level like 30 times as a kid. How often do you see Mole Man in fucking anything? 
My biggest problem with this game as a kid and still as an adult is that Spider-Man exists in this game and you just can't play as him at all in the main story. Only the versus mode. Speaking of which, I actually really dig this. It's of course multiplayer and allows up to four different fighters. You can even pick out four different characters and just make them fight on their own and just spectate, which is also a lot of fun. When I was a kid, I didn't realize I put spectate mode on and I thought I was just kicking everybody's asses to Hulk only to realize like five minutes into the match that I wasn't doing shit. This game also has a really good roster. You have some of the Avengers and even Wolverine. Oh, we need some milk! and they're facing off against Dr. Doom and his evil team of doofuses. This was probably my introduction to the Hulk vs. Abomination dynamic, and I'm not complaining at all. <laughs> this too easy for Hulk. Well, this is certainly an interesting turn of events. That's mine! Unfortunately, I got pretty bored with this game this time around, and there's not really a whole lot I want to talk about, which is why I never made a solo video on it. One thing I will give this game credit for, though, is taking up so many random nostalgic slots in my head. You know what I mean, guys, where just like a random three-second memory of a game just sticks in your brain forever like this. That's it. That's the whole memory. But anyway, let's move on from this Lego-like beat-em-up game about superheroes to a Lego-like beat-em-up game about Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I was gonna make a whole video about this game, but like the last game, it doesn't really warrant one. That's not to say it's a bad game, in fact I enjoy this one a lot. It's a 3D platformer beat-em-up puzzle thing, look I'm not entirely sure what to call it. It feels like a Lego game, except they're not Legos, they're just little people. This game follows everyone's favorite group as we play through some of their very first investigations. The whole gang's here. You got Young Fred, which sounds like a rapper name, Daphne, Velma, no not that one, yeah that one. And who could forget Scooby-Doo himself and his best friend Shag, oh god dude. This guy looks exactly like me. He even walks the same as me. Getting back on topic, I'm actually really excited to be revisiting this game. It's really one of the first games I fell in love with as a kid. This is the shit I would think about to get me through my hard day of first grade. <laughs> I played this game like my life depended on it. If I had free time, I played this game and I was a kid, so I had a lot of free time. <laughs> Everything from this game is engraved in my head from the fun music to the cool levels of unique designs. And some of my favorite Scooby-Doo villains can be found in this game. I'm not a Scooby-Doo expert, so I have no clue if these are unique characters or not, so someone let me know in the comments, I guess. <laughs> so I'll stop digging around now and actually boot up the game. Oh fuck, oh shit! I remember this! Oh hell yeah, this dude fucking slaps, dude! Okay, now you're just starting to freak me out, dude, stop! Dude, freaky stop! Starting up the game, it gets right into the plot. Wow, a little on edge? Sorry, Velma. Like we haven't eaten since the snack after lunchtime snack. Shaggy. Ooh. I don't remember a laugh track being there. Totally! With Scoob and my sweet dance moves in her act, she'll get a first place trophy! Then we can go eat our way to ours! Okay, okay, Shaggy, we fucking get it, man. It's done. Wrap it up. Now, wrap it up. <laughs> now, this is the shit I remember. This game is split into four different episodes, each with unique, interesting plots. And each of them have their own cold opening, like the first one, for example. The episode opens in a dark theater as his big glasses have an ass lady gives Daphne's sister shit for like five minutes straight. Uh, you must project! And before you know it, shit starts getting a little spooky. I hope. Oh shit, what was that? <laughs> Then the gang arrive at school to save the day. Basically every level plays out like this, but they're so fun and unique that I never really get tired of it. The gameplay itself is really simple, you just beat guys up and jump over obstacles. Each character having their own moveset, like Shaggy who apparently has a slingshot now. Velma and her infinite supply of books. Daphne does karate like in the movie. Fred just punches people, kind of like how he just says fuck. And Scooby uses the sausage link for some reason. Aside from the fighting, you have the occasional puzzle. And these little chase scenes are fun even though you can't fucking see anything. The boss fights are even pretty fun even though they're extremely simple, which is to be expected. This is by far the best game we've covered in this video. Usually I'm a little let down by my childhood games when I go back and play them. But this one holds up surprisingly well. Go play this shit if you can find a copy. It's not that hard, honestly. It's like on eBay for 10 bucks. <laughs> 
And that's going to do it for episode four of Guilty Pleasures, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I personally think it's probably the best episode yet. Really wanted the pacing on this one to be nice and smooth. And I also didn't want to sound like I was about to fucking fall asleep like I was last time. I wasn't actually about to, but it fucking sounds like I was. So yeah, guys, thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this, maybe like and subscribe. And I will see you next time in like, uh, probably two decades with episode five of Guilty Pleasures. <laughs>